Our average speed, our top speed and distance per hour for the competitors while racing. So Brodie Moyer has won both of the first two races, so she gets to dictate what she wants as the first leg and then they draw the next two legs. So far in all three races, she's asked for, the uh, first two races, she's asked for the ski to be first. Let's see what she's chosen here. So the ski... Away they go in the ski leg. It will be ski, board and swim. And so far, it has been the series leader. You can see it in the green cosy out to the right. It looks like Courtney Hancock has got a good start as they move out through this little shore break. Very different from the last two races. We saw at the start of the last two races, Brody Moyer really take off flying. So now, off to the right of the screen, wearing that yellow leader's costume, not quite as good a start. Yeah, but I'm loving her technique. She's looked so good. She's improved during the winter in Clayto. She's the uh, red hot person at the moment in Iron Woman Racing. She, she is, but as we look back there now, Rebecca Creedy's just been clipped by a little wave, tiny little waves, knocked her off a ski there. Trevor Hendy, welcome on the water. I heard you say uh, Brody Moyer's been red hot at the moment. Well, I'll tell you what, <laughs> it's, um, you need to get in the water. She's been electrifying the first couple of rounds. The water out here is sensational. It's so refreshing. It's not like standing on the beach where it's stinking hot. And a little bit, like about 10 minutes ago, there was a sour east breeze, which we thought was going to be that change. And all of a sudden, it just went away, and it got seriously seven or eight degrees warmer again. Trev, so who knows what's happening out here at the moment, but it's, uh, it's a little bit like paradise. Trev, talk us through um, Brady Moore's stroke. You're out there and looking through. She looks so strong and dominant. Talk us through her ski stroke. Mate, um, I, I love watching her paddle at the moment on the board as well. Um, she's so got, uh, she's very tall, so she's got big long levers, and she's using them very well. I think it's that confidence, Leachie. We've seen her for a couple of years. We've talked about her, talked about how we thought she could go much better than she was. All of a sudden, she's got the confidence, and you can see that in her stroke. She sits really upright. She's got really good rotation. She's using all the major muscles, all those trunk and core muscles. And she just paddled all the way around the outside there in that ski and still holding onto that lead position. And that's, remember, that's next to an Olympian, Naomi Flood, in kayaking. So she's doing very, very well. Well, funny you say that, Naomi Flood. She's moved up on the inside on the turn, and it's her, Courtney Hancock, and Brody Moyer all out in the top three places. You can have a look at the replay of the start, and that shore break really smashed a couple of the girls, Phil. Well, what happened there, um, Bonnie Hancock actually got clipped right in the chest, and her ski went back and actually landed on the front deck of um, Rebecca Creedy's ski and knocked her off. Yeah, that's unlucky. Well, struggling to recover from that, of course, there are two legs to go, the board and the swim to come, but it is a very big lead that these first three girls, Naomi Flood at the start there, there's Rebecca Creedy, but Courtney Hancock and Brody Moyer are leading this at the moment. So it's the bottom three that will not make it through to this fourth and final race. That's right. So we've lost four on the first race, four on the second, three get knocked out in this third race. And Naomi Flood, as we expect, uh, had a great ski leg there. She'll get off first. Hayden Quinn on the beach. Hot conditions, tough for these girls on the sand. Leachy, it is very warm down here. It's like a sauna. There's humidity. There's no wind. Trev said it before. It's just it, the wind picked up and then it stopped. But these girls, they seem to be handling it quite well. They get out. They chuck their ice vests on. But doesn't Brody Moyer look good running across that podium down? Now she's just got to follow Floody in on the board. It's all go down here. The crowd's loving it. It's fun times at Newcastle Beach. They're fit, aren't they? I mean, you, you, if this is their third race, we're talking up near 40 degree heat. The sand's soft, it's hot out there, and uh, they just keep going and going. Yeah, it's, it's, it's non-stop down here, Leachy. It's beautiful work. It's great to see such fit young girls going around the cans, and great to see the crowd support as well. And Nick, a race like this, you talk about their speed, but the ones at the top, I mean, it, it's a race of strategy, isn't it? You need to get to that last race and have some petrol left in the tank. Absolutely. It's mental toughness as well. How does Rebecca Creedy feel right now? She is last. So if she continues in this spot, she's done. Her, her business is done for the day. And it's bad luck that got her in that position. She in does have the swim coming, though, Nicole. She obviously, her strongest leg. But uh, she needs to get going, Rebecca Creedy. And those couple of girls in front of her also in what we call the red zone. We can have a look at the Telstra tracker, Phil. Floody's going nicely. She certainly is. 19.6 kilometres there. Top speed on the ski coming down that short little wave heading back into the shore. So great little stats I, for, that's for the, Naomi. That's the fastest speed we've had in the first two races. So in Perth, I don't think we hit 19 or over 20 kilometres an hour. 
maybe around that. So it'll be interesting to see as the day goes on if we crack that 20. But I tell you what, for Rebecca Creedy, who could win the event today, her she's 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 a great short course specialist. To have to fight back that much of being that far back and use up the petrol, that's not a great sign for her. So even if she gets through, she's gonna to have to use up a lot of energy to fight back into the field. There are our lead girls. Brody Moyer in the green costume. She's the series leader. Naomi Flood is right behind her. It's a little bit about conserving energy for those lead girls as well, Nicole. It certainly is. I'm just wondering whether Trevor, if you can hear me out there, one of the things I've noticed with Brody Moyer is that she has been conserving energy. Whenever she can, she's getting this lead and she's really taking in the big breaths, making sure that she actually recovers. How did she look going around those cans, Trev? Uh, Nick, you read my mind. The funny thing is, in between when she's laying down, she's actually on her knees and really, really reaching out. She's not just using her arms, she's using her whole body. Looks sensational and then has a rest. Brody Moyer leads to Naomi Flood. The red zone in is getting hot. This is the Telstra Iron Woman series from Newcastle. Yeah. Welcome back to Newcastle Beach. Brody Moyer has led every race. She has been the dominant performer. She won in Scarborough. And in this eliminator, she wants to stay out of trouble. She's out in front. Behind her is Naomi Flood. And behind those girls is where it gets serious. We lose three more competitors in this event. But Brody Moyer looks sensational. She's just clean down the beach. What great ways, Clay, though. It's, uh, two to three foot, nice clean ways breaking in. We went for a swim earlier, you and I, and uh, the water is so clear. Who won? Uh, Leach got me. <laughs> and that's just because he's the boss, right? You have to let him win. Now, the great, the great thing about the surf at the moment is the tide's on the way out. So that means that by the time you push on through, there's going to be there's going to be a great little wave. Now, here we go. The four girls coming down the way. This is going to be the red zone oh. right here. And the red zone is getting crowded, Howie. Yeah, well, Bonnie Hancock's in there. You've got Candace Fowler, one of the favourites today, who's in there as well. Oh, there's another one out the back as well. Yeah, there's a few more girls still coming in. That's Rebecca. Rebecca Creedy out the yeah. back. We so lose three in this race. Three girls get knocked out. So currently two girls girls in this group of five will not be here after the swim so this is the real race within the race as the girls head up the beach there's Tara Coleman she's performed pretty well I've seen her father the NRL star Craig on the beach earlier on today yeah, Daryl Halligan as well uh, father of uh, Devin Halligan who was a great rugby league player as well so two in the uh, the group have fathers that were football stars Candace Felzon has talked publicly about trying to get some redemption in this leg from a disappointment of last leg last year where she had uh, issues with her ski and it really just she looked as though she was going to take out a win in Newcastle and and just it all came crumbling down well there's Creedy, as it is so for Creedy she, today. she's a note of swimming Nick and um, if anyone can pull back a little bit it's her but I but think look it's, at the body language Leachy yeah no she's still fighting she still thinks she's a chance I mean Clado on the way in though if you can crack one of those waves coming in on that bank that can change the whole race around so I think that's what she'll be thinking try to get herself in a position where she can actually get down a wave yeah. I think so Leachy but looking at what she just did then she had a little bit of a stumble yeah. running in the water she was a little bit off it's going to be a very big ask for her to get back from there but she'd be hoping that these people in front of her actually don't catch a wave and when she comes in the opportunity to catch one to catch back up does come Creedy, Coleman, Felzon are the three in the red zone at the moment but it is bunched the, the back five places are bunched I, I wanted to fight though I wanted to fight to the end and just really <laughs> give it give it everything because you know what you never know do you you could get a set wave it can make 50 metres difference but that's our that's our sport well, that's the way it is look at the lead though as we focus on the red zone look at the lead with Brody Moyer beautiful stroke the one thing that I've noticed with all three of her disciplines is how much she's improved with her technique as well the fitness is obviously helping but her technique is just fantastic including her swimming yeah well Trev confidence is a big thing back in your day you were a very confident competitor and uh, Brody Moore going 20.6 kilometers an hour at top speed on the board that's uh, that's that's uh, going very very quick so um, she's obviously going very very fast at the moment the times for the first two races were around the 11 minute 30 to 12 minute mark and uh, she's holding a great pace at the moment Trevor Hendy you're out there amongst the action we're looking at the girls in the red zone now yeah, I tell you what, just going back to what Leachie said, Brody looks sensational. I think I mentioned last year that I heard Lee Matthews say hope brings energy, you know, and she's got a lot of hope now. She just knows she can do well. She looks great in her stroke. But the very opposite thing happened at the back of the tail, the tail of the field. I heard Nick talking about Beck Creedy. I tried to give her a bit of a cheer on. It seems she didn't handle that very well at all. When she was paddling the board, she looked like she'd given up. She missed one wave because she really didn't put the effort in. 
either that or there's something we don't know. She doesn't feel very good. And she would have been. She's only about 10, 12 metres off the tail of the field right now. She could have easily picked up a wave. So you've got one person showing what it takes at the front and one person at the back possibly learning what it takes. Trev, the other thing Lee Matthews said was if it bleeds, you can kill it. And that is the approach. <laughs> yes. Brody Moyer is taking. She has been absolute sensational. And she'll cruise up the beach knowing she'll choose the starting leg, which you'd imagine will be the ski again for the final decider, which will just have six ladies oh, in it. Oh, here comes so this is where it gets serious, Leachy. This is the race within a race. Candice fouls on is in there, striving to make it through to the final. Tara Coleman and also Lyra Richardson there, the three that got down that wave. So we've got two more out the back. This is Rebecca Creedy's on a wave as well, just behind there. Oh, no, she's just down it. the back. There's a big one coming through now. So the last mark of my crack this. This is Rebecca Creedy. Oh, it's going to break on top of her, though. No, bad timing. For a bad timing. Uh, She'll miss that. Just nothing left. She has absolutely no energy left in her body whatsoever, Rebecca Creedy. So the girls come across the line. Well under fouls on. Good on you. These girls will all be through. This is where it starts getting serious. We will lose the bottom three girls. And these girls are in trouble. In fact, that will be the day for Bonnie Hancock which is disappointing. She won't make her way through to the final. Rebecca Creedy won't be there either. Alira. Alira and Alira Richardson will also miss the cut. Wow, what a tough day at the office. Well, Heartbreaking. Hot out there. Elise Bennett's been very good, though. I mean, Brody Moyer has been sensational, but she's been right there. Here is Rebecca Creedy. Just wow. Well, a few of the top girls will be happy she's out because she can pull a big race every now and then, and she's one of those athletes that, in a short course event, can uh, can nudge away in front and cause a lot of trouble. If we go back, Rebecca Creedy's whole race was over in the very first leg. Now that's going to happen in every race. If you get clipped by one little wave, someone ski bumps you. That's proof in the pudding. You've got to make sure that every single race you put everything together properly. Hayden Quinn is on the beach with Alira Richardson. Alira, you went so hard in those earlier rounds, and to get to here and to uh, sort of just get knocked out, it was a bit of bit of unlucky for you out there today. Yeah, I was a bit upset. I mean, I was in good form today um, with the two previous races, but unfortunately going out in that swim, then I um, took the wrong alley and couldn't see the first can, unfortunately, properly, and. And then up going too far north and, you know, it's so far to catch up then. It's tricky out there today. That bank really comes up quite quickly and then drops off again. You can get caught with people catching waves from behind or jagging, as we call it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You can have a few jaggers in the race. I mean, you can be 20 metres in front and then all of a sudden a wave does come through and picks up those back markers. The next minute you're in dead last. So, um, yeah, it just depends on the day how lucky you are sometimes. Are you still got it? You're still in high spirits. You must be looking forward to Porty then. Yeah, definitely. I love Portsea. It's one of the most iconic beaches. Um, the first ever oh, Nishka and Ironwood race is actually in Portsea when I was 16, so I just can't wait to get back there. Well done. We'll see you there. Here are the results. That's the end of the 25-year-old from Wollongong. But Brody Moyer, she's been dominant. Flood is through. Hancock, that was our podium from the first round. Falzon, Bennett and Coleman uh, all the way through to the final. Goodbye to Bonnie Hancock, Alira Richardson and Rebecca Creedy, and there is our leader. She looks sensational in green. She won her first round in Perth a couple of weeks ago, and she'll be choosing the leg. I think it'll be the ski as the girls get set for the Iron Women final here at Newcastle.